We were discussing just there, the front page of the Business Post has a piece or has a quote from the Finance Minister, Michael McGrath, saying, putting the brake on Dublin Airport risks economic future. And this is the debate about whether or not Dublin Airport should be allowed to expand to the extent that it wants to. And that expand, expansion hinges on a Fingal County Council decision about um, planning permissions and whether or not they are allowed to have a certain amount of passengers and the impact that that will have in the local area. And there is significant and interesting opposition, intriguingly a lot of it from the Green Party, who's um, from where the Transport Minister comes. Uh, Roderick O'Gorman, for instance, saying that residents in Dublin West will suffer an increase in noise. And he says that during a climate emergency, it is an act of folly to propose expanding airport passenger numbers by 25%. And you heard during the news there suggestions that the WHO itself is recommending that we would curtail the amount of aviation that there is and the notion that we are doing our best in every sector to limit carbon emissions while saying, well, there is one rule for us and a different rule for the DAA. Kenny Jacobs is with us. He's the chief executive of the DAA. Good morning, Kenny. Good morning, Anton. So one rule for us and one rule for you. You get to do what you want. Um, no, we're, we're not saying that. Look, there, there's a lot there in your intro. We absolutely uh, accept that aviation needs to do a lot on climate change. It, aviation is responsible for less than 2.5% of emissions. Let's not forget that. And aviation has a good plan. So we want to get on with that plan. We want to reduce emissions. And as I've said previously, and I know plenty of people say I'm nuts to say this, if we don't go ahead and expand Dublin Airport, lift the cap, invest in vital infrastructure that includes sustainability infrastructure, then many things go backwards, including the emissions at Dublin Airport. The only thing that will happen if we keep Dublin Airport capped is we lose connectivity, we will lose jobs, airfares will go up. We don't reduce emissions. We'll just move it to other airports like now, Manchester, like Edinburgh. Okay. And that's what's proven Let, in Schiphol. Let's look at the, the two potential emissions from Dublin Airport. One is from the traffic that comes in and out of it by road. The other is from traffic that comes in and out of it by air. Some of that traffic that's being routed through Dublin Airport is connecting flights in and out where they are. And Dublin is not the ultimate destination for those aircraft. Um, you would have the scope to allow them to go to other airports and therefore not have a direct Dublin impact on uh, carbon emissions. And likewise, you would have the scope to wait until there is a metro or there is a more efficient in terms of carbon method to get people in and out of the airport before you expand. And all that would cost jobs and connectivity. So that's not the way aviation works. So we are capped. Uh, We are capped at the moment. That cap is based on the condition from 2007, which was based on surface access. So let's be clear, that's vehicles coming to and from the airport bringing passengers. Now, there's actually less vehicles this year than there were in 2019 coming to the airport. There's more people coming on buses, and that's a good thing. We're announcing tomorrow that in 2025, we'll have over 35 million bus capacity at the airport. So all of this is, all of this is good. Um, but the, the 2007 condition and the cap, it's a nonsense because the demand is there from the airlines. Uh, Road vehicles are down. The the terminals can take 35 million people. And let's not forget, we're an island economy and we absolutely need this vital connectivity. And if we're saying cap Dublin, because it'll be good and it'll go to the regions, that's not correct. Well, hang on for a minute. If if we go back, and if you you go back to your, your former employer, your former employer proved the sort of southwest model of there is always an additional airport within two hours of the one you want to go to and people will fly to it. What precludes a lot of the traffic that is coming into Dublin from going to Shannon, from going to Knock, from going to Belfast, from going to Waterford? We have other airports. We do, Anton. And you're right. Nothing precludes it. And if it was going to happen, it would have happened already. And there's a natural balance to this. Look, there, there is the hub airport, which is Dublin, and there are the regional airports. If the airlines want to move some traffic from Dublin to the other airports, they are free to do that and always have been. And that will continue. Capping Dublin does not result in the airline saying, right, we'll just do more flights to and from Cork, Shannon and Knock. They're able to do that already. It's Dublin but they are economically airport. incentivized not to. And if that economic incentivization alters, then there is a greater chance that they will go elsewhere. They're not economically incentivized to keep traffic at Dublin. They're just responding to where the demand is. Dublin is a very low charge 
airport for them, as are the regional airports. There is no incentive for them to pick Dublin over the other uh, over the other airports. They're just responding to where the demand is, where they have higher load factors. But my point being, if they have higher load factors currently into Dublin, and you say, well, look, the economics changes of that, or we cap that. Well, what is? Why wouldn't they then say, well, it may cost us five percent, ten percent more to go into Cork or to go into Shannon, but it's still economically feasible, so we'll shift our traffic there. They will go to Bergamo, they will go to Rome, they will go to Edinburgh, they will go to Manchester. Dublin's a hub airport. And when we talk to the airlines, which we do all the time, and we and the airlines want the same thing here. And look, ultimately, we want, and I think all the airports in Ireland should grow because we're a small island economy. But capping Dublin will not move flights and choice to the regions. It will simply move flights off the island. That doesn't reduce total emissions. That's the benefit of airports like the ones I've lifted, listed, Manchester and Edinburgh, who are already now actively targeting airlines flying to, to Dublin to say, we'll give you a new incentive if, because Dublin's capped, why don't you come here? And if that's what people want to do, and I know some people in the Green Party are saying, that's great, that's a wonderful model. All they're doing is saying, let's lose jobs, let's lose vital connectivity. Irish people will pay higher airfares. No emissions would be reduced. But hang on, uh, just let me get clear. It, it, attaching the two of those together then, Kenny, if you're talking about they will move flights off the island and Dublin being a hub airport, mm. that is to suggest that the flights which will not come to Dublin in, in, if, if the cap mm. uh, remains, they are flights where those who are travelling are not travelling to get here. These are not business people coming to do business in Ireland. These are not tourists coming to uh, see Ireland. These are um, people travelling through the airport and we lose nothing economically by having them elsewhere. The only people who lose is DAA and your fees. No, I don't agree with that. A lot of these are business people who are coming to Dublin um, and then want to go on elsewhere in Europe. So last week, Anton, I talked to two American airports who don't have connectivity with Dublin, who want to have connectivity with Dublin. These two cities are big pharma and tech hubs, and they want to come to Dublin and then go on elsewhere in Europe because they're doing business in pharma and tech industry. So it's not to say that let's just not make Dublin viable for transfers. That totally changes the model. That will re- re- big result in a big reduction in connectivity because that's the way hub airports work. It's connectivity in from long haul, onward connectivity on short haul with people having done business in Dublin. But look, a cap was tried in Schiphol and a cap was fought to, found to be flawed. It didn't reduce emissions. All that happened was an American airline, JetBlue, challenged it and ultimately EU legislation on competition law determined that the cap there uh, was unlawful. Uh, and caps aren't a good thing. There is no cap around oh, sorry, the world just that, can, clear, that has worked. Th- the cap currently exists. This is not the imposition of a cap. This is a cap on which you have been operating for the last number of years. You just haven't been close to the ceiling yet. Yeah, no, the, 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 cap is, the cap is a planning condition. We are complying with the planning condition. Look, we wanted to change. That's why we've submitted a new infrastructure application that will ultimately change it when we get planning permission to expand the airport and operate up to 40 million passengers. So yes, the cap exists, but the cap technically, from my point of view, is a nonsense because the airport can operate and can handle 35 million passengers. The key roads into the airport have less cars on them, which is a good thing, and more people are coming uh, are, and more people are coming on buses. And the demand is there from the airlines. And I'll keep reminding everybody, we're a small island economy, or you know, jobs are already being put at risk, and some jobs are being lost because airlines are saying it's too risky to consider flying to Dublin because they've read about this cap. Um, we want to grow in a sustainable way, and we've got a very good plan to grow in a sustainable way, but we want to get the cap lifted and and the sooner the better. There's a number of ways to do that, but the sooner the better because it's good for the economy. There's a number of arguments that are being put up by those who oppose the cap being lifted. One of them is the the, uh, carbon impact, which we've discussed. One of them is the centralisation of the, or the incentivisation to centralise traffic into Dublin, which we've discussed. The other main argument is the impact that it will have on the local community around the airport, both in terms of on land congestion and noise. So if I go to what Kieran Cuff, who will be speaking to us in a minute, said, he's quoted as saying, never have I seen a state body show such disregard for the communities impacted by their plans. The people of North Dublin deserve a good night's sleep as much as anyone else. This application makes no plans to reduce the noise or emissions impact of a cap increase. 
And I disagree with that. Look, noise, noise we take very, very seriously and our relationship with the local community we take very seriously. Most of the people who, who work for us and work for the airlines and everybody on the campus, they're part of the local community. So look, their livelihoods uh, and a good night's rest is absolutely part of that. So I'm happy to say, look, noise is going in the right direction because it's halved compared to before when we had the North Runway. So before previously, you would have had flights going over Santry, over Whitehall and much higher number uh, of households were impacted particularly on, on windy mornings with flights going in that direction. But noise it has been halved uh, and it will continue to come in the right direction. We're doing more noise monitoring. We're doing more buyouts of houses that are close to the runways. We are doing more insulation of houses and we want to But you're still, more. I mean, there's no way to get around the fact that if you put 25% more traffic into the airport, that is 25% more jet engines over people's buildings. And if they're unlucky enough for the wind to require you to fly over where they live, they're going to hear it. And it is going to be an increase in the traffic on the roads get into the airport even if a tiny percentage of them are on a bus and 25 percent more flights anton doesn't mean 25 percent more noise okay so on the right aircraft uh, with the right flight times uh, with the way we're going to use and optimize the use of the right uh, of the two runways insulating more homes so that the decibels are at, a, are at the right levels buying out more homes that's what you do and look living near an airport yes it does and always will bring an element of noise but we will work with the community to say what's the best way that we can manage it and look that's part of the balance of what's good for the national lead and what's good for the national lead is lift the cap and Dublin grows because that means lots of jobs in Dublin in Finland in Leinster and all around the country, driven by aviation, driven by hospitality. But we take our responsibilities locally very, very seriously, and we'll continue to do more than any airport I can think of in terms of noise mitigation, in terms of insulating and working with the community. As I said, look, a big, big new fact, 35 million bus capacity uh, next year. That's more than the uh, passenger capacity that we're allowed to have. That's an indication of how, how much we want to move people onto buses to reduce road congestion, but ultimately, Road congestion is, is that's not a fact anymore. You know, there are 5% less vehicles using the key airport roads compared to 20. I can't uh, tell that to people trying to get through the M50, M1 roundabout. And, 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 and look, it can be difficult, but I tell anyone who's lived in Manchester, near Heathrow, near airports like Frankfurt, and it's totally different. Congestion coming to the airport, yeah, on a good Friday morning, an Easter Saturday morning, it, it can be a challenge, but it's much better than other European airports, and it's going in the right direction because we're moving more people onto buses, and it will further go in the right direction once Metrolink, uh, once Metrolink comes to the airport. Kenny, thank you very much for your time this morning. That is Kenny Jacob, the DAA CEO. And I was quoting earlier on what uh, Green MEP Kieran Cuff had to say in respect of the noise and the impact on the local community. Kieran Cuff is with us. And you heard there, Kieran Cuff, Kenny Jacobs uh, saying effectively that your suggestion that this is going to increase noise is totally uh, unfounded, that they now have a, a new runway which diverts planes so that they don't fly over uh, the kind of urban conurbations that they did previously and where they do, the DEA is buying out houses and insulating houses. Well, in some respects, uh, the, the noise will reduce for certain communities, but in other areas it will increase. There's new flight patterns, there's new um, ways in which the traffic can be managed. Uh, and in some respects, that is helping. Uh, but at the same time, a 25% increase in traffic uh, means pretty much an increase in planes and an increase in noise. So while the new flat pa flight paths do help, uh, it doesn't overcome the problem of expansion in the first place. Well, Kenny Jacobs is saying that first of all, the noise is being mitigated by the actions that they are taking, but more importantly, that they face a situation where there is an economic necessity for Dublin to be able to handle this kind of traffic and that what you are doing, if, if you get your way, is you're applying medicine that will kill the patient. I don't buy that. I think we want to see good jobs, green jobs in the future. But job creation in Ireland does not depend on endless expansion in aviation. Uh, and as we transition to a green economy, we're creating good, well-paying jobs in energy, in surface travel, in agriculture. There's so much that can be done. Uh, and we simply don't have to tie ourselves onto aviation as the only game in time, well, uh, well, as the only game in, in town. To look at the people and who... And, but hang on for a second aviation. on that, Karen. To look at the people who disagree with you on that. My, uh, Michael McGrath, the Minister for Finance, is saying, no, this risks our economic future if we don't breach the cap. Conor McCarthy, the Executive Chairman at Emirates, uh, at Emerald Airlines, 
is saying that this is ill thought out and the notion that we have a new runway but we can't breach this cap makes no sense. International Airlines Group, the parent of Aer Lingus and British Airways, also saying that this needs to be done and Michael O'Leary roaring it from the rooftops. Well, look, turkeys don't vote for Christmas. Um, It's very simple. If Michael O'Leary wants to get his 100 million euro bonus, he has to keep pushing for the expansion of aviation, which to my mind, is completely insane in the middle of a a climate breakdown and a climate... uh, Michael O'Leary is not going to push for an increase in aviation unless he knows that the bums are there for the seats. What he is saying is, I can put people into Dublin Airport. These will be tourists. These will be people who want to come and see Ireland. International Airlines Group is saying the same and saying we will bring business people in. Kenny Jacobs is saying the same thing and saying that if you stop this, this money doesn't come into the state. We have a choice to make regarding the type of jobs that Ireland has in the future. And what I've seen over the last 10 years is really good, well-paying jobs in construction, in uh, energy, in uh, sustainable forms of transportation, in agriculture. And these are the jobs of the future. And I think endless expansion of aviation means that greenhouse gas emissions will increase. And that's a problem. And I know the aviation industry has done a lot to move in a greener direction. I've been working in Brussels on new laws on sustainable aviation fuel, but that is going to take time. The the expectation is that we will only get to 6% sustainable aviation fuels by 2030, 20% by 2035. And even then, we're really reliant on biofuels rather than synthetic fuels. And that's a problem because we okay. end up importing biofuels from the Far East. Let me ask uh, you one, one final thing on this. Not sustainable. One final thing on this, um, Kieran Cove. Obviously, Eamon Ryan, by virtue of the fact that he is a cabinet minister, has to keep silent on the ultimate decision by Fingal County Council because it's a local authority matter in respect of the planning permission. However, he doesn't have to remain silent on overarching aviation policy. And what you've just said is that you believe that an endless expansion of aviation is a huge error. Why then is the Green Minister who is responsible for that not saying the same thing? I think the Green Party has consistently said that our economic and social policies have to align with our climate policies. And to me, clearly, we need to think carefully about the future of agriculture. You have the aviation the portfolio. Why is the minister the not calling aviation. a halt to this unending growth, if that's what the party believes? Which it evidently well, does I by think what you say. Well, I think be very careful in regard to a live planning application. And you have to ensure that any remarks that you make are not prejudicial uh, to the case. And to be honest, I was raising an eyebrow when I saw the Taoiseach uh, say uh, very clearly he favoured... Well, sure, he's um, held the ministry for uh, years. Th- that's true, that's true. Um, but I, I, Eamon has consistently said that we need to align our economic policies with our with, with our climate policies. And look, it's, it's not... It, Sorry, I lost you there for a second, but I mean, we do have to tackle aviation. We do have to make sure that people have a decent night's sleep. We do have to travel the surface pollution, as we heard there, the local uh, air pollution around the airport. And and hugely in the short term, we need to tackle the traffic congestion. And I mean, the M50 is off on a car park. We need to ensure that this isn't the case. We need to ensure uh, that we move the surface transport in a sustainable direction. But the airport was saying that we need to have more car parks uh, okay. as recently as last year. Kieran so Cuff. I want to ensure that the DAA comply with their planning permissions uh, and, okay, Kieran, and have move that in a more sustainable direction. 